So you got any data yet on whether anything's selling for Christmas? Well, you know, um, I can tell you that, um, you know, the hardware guys brought their pricing down, Sony, PlayStation 3, Xbox 360, Wii, and they've all put out releases saying that their sales have skyrocketed in uh, Thanksgiving week. Um, you've seen some news reports from us, uh, FIFA, number one selling game in Europe so far this year. Um, you've seen announcements from people like um, Ubisoft that Assassin's Creed has sold 1.6 million units, or that um, Valve, our partner, has said that Left 4 Dead sold 2 million units. Um, we said that Dragon Age, one of our games, sold really, really well and actually did a million pieces of downloadable content already, which is an astonishing outcome. And so there's a lot of good positive indicators out there. But frankly, you know, for a couple, couple things, it's a little early to call Christmas, you know, given that, you know, we're in the first week of December. And um, frankly, it's a little bit challenging for us, given we're in some little quiet period to give you too much in the way of guidance. The trends, I mean, the, 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 the gaming industry has undergone a tremendous transformation in the last couple of years. It's been a challenge to all the companies involved. I mean, and you call it a digital, you know, the kind of digital transformation. Tell me a little bit about what that's about and what EA does to, to, to meet that challenge. Um, you know, for, for many, many years, the game industry really was a hobbyist business. And um, it originally was a PC business, and then it became a console business around the, if you will, around, you know, around Sega and Nintendo, then ultimately the PlayStation 1, PlayStation 2, and then the Wii. And in aggregate, these consoles probably reach as many as 200 million people worldwide. And with the advent of online, digital transformation of all sorts of landscape of media, we've seen a torrent of new consumers come into our business. And I think conservatively, if I add up mobile users that play games, you know, social network people that play games, uh, people that play PC games online in Asia, all this, th this new audience, there's at least a billion people gaming today compared to a couple hundred million just as, you know, five years ago. So we have five times the audience we've ever had, and it's growing in leaps and bounds. And it's no longer a niche. Our biggest releases dwarf the release of a Hollywood box office movie. So the numbers are very, very big, and they can no longer be ignored. And one of the things we've seen is, you know, the packaged goods business, if you will, the console game business, used to be pretty much all of it. As recently as five, six years ago, single-digit percentage was, if you will, direct-to-consumer digital, the new media landscape. And 80, 90 percent, 95 percent, was, you know, a more traditional packaged goods business catering to that core audience. Um, what we see today is, you know, around about 40 percent of the business is digital. It's a very fast-growing segment. These are the games that you would find on Pogo or the games that you would find through EA's mobile business or what you'd find on an iPhone which you might subscribe to or, or find on a social network where you do microtransactions. And because this is such a fast-growing business and it's such an important new audience, we feel it's important to embrace both the traditional packaged goods business and this new audience. And what we've been doing is, is reducing the number of titles we make on the core, investing more to make them bigger, and we've actually seen revenue growth as a consequence of that on the core, and we have an incredibly fast-growing business on the digital side. This past quarter alone, we recorded $138 million in revenue, pure digital. And it's a profitable business, and it's up 30% year over year. And subsequent to our last quarter, we announced the acquisition of Playfish, which is one of the leading companies on social network games. So if you're on Facebook and want to play a game, Playfish is the place to go. Is it harder, easier to deal with, with basically an online world than a packaged world, or and then is there overlap between them, or are they distinct? You know, I think like a lot of things, they start distinct. Um, you know, for a lot of folks, their email and their phone and their address book were three separate things once upon a time. And you know, today they're really all bundled up, in whether it's their iPhone or their BlackBerry or their you know their their Palm Pre or whatever it is they happen to use. And increasingly, the intelligence behind the games means these are becoming the same thing. The data that fuels a social network application is also the data that fuels uh, an iPhone application. With EA, for example, you can play Scrabble on Facebook, you can play Scrabble on your iPhone, or if you've got an iPhone and I'm on my PC, we can play with each other across two very desperate platforms. And we do the same thing with a lot of our games from console to PC, from PC to mobile, where we sort of start to stitch this together. So once upon a time, I think, our games felt more like things or products. It was on a disc and that was all there is. Today, virtually every one of our games is played online. They're played with you know, dozens, hundreds, sometimes thousands of other players. And the data and services behind it are the most dynamic part of it. 
Um, this year alone, you know, just the packaged goods business of EA Sports, one part of our company, we've hosted over a billion online games. A billion online games. That's a staggering number. And these are, you know, these are where people are playing an hour, two hours, and three hours. I mean, it's the productivity of a small nation wrapped up in just EA Sports Online. It's the interactivity, which is the new, the new kind of thing. It's, a, it be, it's become a social thing. In other words, it's not just game, a game aficionado out there playing by himself with his computer. So I think it's a lot of different things, but I think you're right. It is the social activity. But let me give some dimension to that. Um, it's sort of fun to play Scrabble when you're, say, sitting around a table with your, your, your sister, your mother, your son, or your daughter. It's, it's another thing to sort of play by yourself. That's not so much fun. Or to play against strangers. What, what I find people are doing, what we see people are doing, whether it's Madden, if it's Need for Speed, if it's our Battlefield games, if it's more casual products like Tetris, people do want to play online with people they know or meet new people to play with, and they want a record that they've been there. They, you know, if they've, if, you know, it's sort of fun to say that we've, you know, we've played Madden with each other eight times, but I want to know that I beat you six out of the last eight times what the point spread was. Because there is a little bit of a bragging right in that. And I can, you know, or I want, may want to go back and study our record and how you beat me, and then I'm going to come back with a new strategy to beat you. That, it, it sort of fosters a different level of engagement. And what I find so great about games is that level of engagement exceeds, personally I believe, exceeds what you can get from film or oftentimes from a book because there's more going on here. It's, it's, a, it's a dynamic landscape that doesn't seem to have an end to it. And consumers, they definitely want to interact socially while they're being entertained. You know, a good observation, and I don't have the exact statistic here, is when the iPhone launched, you saw all this plethora of, of, of uh, new applications. And I think most people presumed that, you know, finding your favorite restaurant or, you know, some sort of interesting social interaction would be what dominated, which turned out to be the biggest category of applications by a wide margin, is games. And in fact, while EA has, you know, seven, eight typically in a given month of the highest grossing games on the platform, typically we also have several of the highest grossing applications full stop because games are so important. But it's not that just, it's not usually just a game where you're playing against the CPU, against the CPU embedded there. What increasingly becomes interesting is you're playing against someone else and or you're posting your scores or you're playing in parallel with someone else, it, sometimes that's actually a little bit less threatening. I don't have to lose. I can just win a little bit less money than you do or virtual money.